anyone who's been injured in an accident that was not your fault, you don't have an attorney, give us a call right now and we'll let you know how much money you can get for your accident. Thanks, Rob. Call now. From the Bay Area's local news station, we begin now with breaking news. I am afraid that, uh, that the whole town is going to burn down. That's, that's, that's like a disaster. It looks like a disaster happening. Growing fear and anxiety in the North Bay tonight as the raging glass fire now near 60,000 acres. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday night. I'm Pam Moore. And I'm Ken Wayne. Cal Fire says the fire has now burned close to 59,000 acres in Napa and Sonoma counties. It's 5% contained. The fire has destroyed 223 homes, more than 28 thousand structures remain threatened and while an exact cause could take months to determine one possible cause is reportedly electric fencing around a remote vineyard near the point of origin it has been nearly a week since it started but the glass fire is refusing to give firefighters a break chief meteorologist Lawrence carno tracking the dangerous fire weather conditions that are expected to last for the next few days Lawrence. yeah really it's just because the wind's going to keep switching directions here right now we're seeing it turn mainly out of the north and the winds well after a day where they had calmed down now they are really beginning to pick up just as we had feared and now we're looking at some pretty gusty winds in and around an active fire not what firefighters wanted to see or anybody that lives in these locations. So here are the very latest winds. It is 19 miles per hour out of the northwest right there in the Pope Valley. St. Helena at 11 miles an hour, 17 Spanish Flats, 17 in Atlas, 18 in Sonoma, 15 in Glen Ellen. But over these mountaintops, you're talking about some very strong gusty winds now developing, and you can see the general push here is from the north to the south. So that is going to take some of the fires and push that back toward the Napa Valley, possibly push that back toward Glen Ellen. Certainly, these areas are of concern into Calistoga, St. Helena, Rutherford, Yountville. Certainly, those areas are undergone tonight as we're going to see those fire conditions continuing and the winds continuing to howl throughout the night. So, red flag warnings have been extended now, not just through today, but now through uh, Saturday as we're going to see some strong gusty winds sticking around. And not only in the North Bay, but in the Santa Cruz Mountains, we're looking at some gusty winds there. Uh, 10 and 20 mile an hour gusts. Look at the humidity down to about 10, 20 percent, maybe some gusts as high as 30 miles per hour there. East Bay, Oakland Hills, uh, right along the 1,000 feet or so, looking at some gusty winds developing and some very low humidity down to 10, maybe 15%, maybe some 30 mile an hour gusts, maybe 35 over Mount Diablo. In the North Bay, that's of greatest concern. We are seeing those gusty winds developing now. They will continue to push through the Bay Area tomorrow, then settle down, I think, by tomorrow morning just a little bit, only to pick up again by tomorrow night and be even more blustery around parts of the Bay Area. So certainly watching out for that as the fire conditions, uh, boy, just not good as we're going to see those winds continuing. Latest forecast, you'll see some of these winds overnight tonight uh, beginning to uh, really kind of uh, slack just a bit as we head toward tomorrow morning. And then again by tomorrow evening, you begin to see the yellows and even some orange beginning to develop. That northerly component of the wind kicking up once again, getting very blustery, I think, as we head in toward the middle of the evening tomorrow and continuing to right about 10 o'clock and then it looks like after that those winds will begin to subside but then as we look toward the following day Saturday those winds start to come out of the west and that's even a bigger concern is now that wind pushes the fire in a different direction you can see right there in Santa Rosa that's a northerly wind very strong to 25 miles per hour you see these winds begin to push more toward Angwin and that could be a concern so wherever that fire gets pushed that's going to cause problems fire conditions continuing for the next few days. Thank you, Lawrence. We have some breaking news to tell you. There is word that has just come out from uh, President Trump. Here it is tonight. FLOTUS, First Lady Melania Trump and I, referring to the president, tested positive for COVID-19. We will begin our quarantine and recovery process immediately. We will get through this together. There's been a lot of speculation tonight because about three hours ago, we learned uh, somebody close to the president had tested positive and that the president and first lady had received a test. And generally those tests only take about 15 minutes or so to get a result, but we hadn't heard anything for, as I said, two or three hours. So a lot of people were wondering what was going on and 
Here we have the answer, Pam. Well, the president and first lady were apparently exposed uh, by one of the uh, president's top aides. Here she is, Hope Hicks. She is a counselor to the president. She's been traveling with him uh, a lot the last week. This is at a rally yesterday. She is the closest aide to the president so far to test positive. She traveled with him on a number of trips, as we said, including on Marine One, the presidential helicopter for a rally in Minnesota yesterday, also on board Air Force. Force One on Tuesday night for the presidential debate. The president and the first lady testing positive for COVID-19. Of course, the president had planned a rally in, I think it was Wisconsin this week. Right. We don't know how uh, all of this is going to affect his duties as president of the United States. Um, there will certainly be more to come in the days ahead and how he decides to, he and his staff and health care providers decide to handle this news. Well, there's uh, uh, some other big questions, Pam. For instance, the presidential debates, as you just mentioned, the typical quarantine is 14 days. Uh, the next presidential debate is supposed to happen, I'm looking at the schedule here, October 15th. So that is right uh, at about two weeks from now. That's supposed to happen in, Michi uh, in Miami, I'm sorry, in Miami. And then the debate after that is October 22nd, the last one in Nashville. So the question is, will he be able to make the debate on October 15th. Will he have Joe Biden there to debate him? Will Vice President Biden, former Vice President, want to be in the same room with somebody who has tested positive? So the Vice President has taken precautions, wearing masks and so on, and President Trump has been downplaying that. Again, you're looking at the President's tweet tonight. Uh, this is breaking news that he and the First Lady have tested positive for COVID-19. This has been such a controversial issue during his presidency about the whole thing over vaccines, the whole thing over wearing masks, and whether Dr. Fauci said one thing and another doctor said something else. Uh, it's been such a contentious subject, and now for the President of the United States to have tested positive for COVID uh, even elevates the discussion even more. As we know, the president of the United Kingdom, um, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Johnson, also went through a severe case, uh, as was explained during his exposure to COVID-19, and other world leaders have tested positive as well. Yeah, the leader of Brazil, but uh, Boris Johnson from uh, the UK was in ICU for a brief period of time and survived. Uh, we're we're going to have to see what happens next. We do not know uh, if the president has any symptoms. Uh, sometimes you can test positive and actually not have any symptoms and be just fine. But uh, we're going to keep our eye on this. And of course, there are questions about other people in the White House that might have been exposed. You can guess that everybody's getting tested right now who's had any contact with the president and first lady. So we know three people, the president, the first lady, and Hope Hicks, one of his senior advisors, are all uh, have all tested positive. So this is a stunning, stunning development and happening right before the election. 33 days to go, Pam, before the election. Two more debates that are supposed to happen. Uh, so here we are. Uh, we got the president of the United States who has been uh, very critical of this whole COVID-19 situation, the pandemic, the United States with the most cases of any country in the world. He's been downplaying it for months. He's and also uh, he's also criticized Joe Biden for coming out at his events wearing masks, saying that um, that he comes out in a mask and he has these small crowds because nobody wants to support him. And then he says he has these big rallies, um, and you know that the people are um, not as you can see in this video, one of his rallies where there's no social distancing. And while the people in the video behind him seem to have on masks, many of the crowds that we've seen over the course of the last month or so do not. Uh, mm -hmm. include Include people who are wearing masks and the CDC and uh, Mr. Redfield with um, uh, many of the other leaders in the administration in the health community have said wearing masks is probably the key for preventing the spread of COVID-19. And we know that Herman Cain, one of uh, his uh, top advisors and a Republican uh, uh, loyalist to the president, uh, died from uh, COVID-19 by after he attended. We don't know if there's a direct connection, but certainly he was at the rally in Oklahoma city when so many other people were there without masks and not social distancing and there were plenty of camera shots of Herman Cain sitting there without a mask surrounded by others and he ended up getting COVID-19 and died so again uh, just to recap 
We just found out uh, within the last few minutes, five minutes or so, that President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump both have tested positive for COVID-19 after their senior advisor, the president's senior advisor, Hope Hicks, had tested positive uh, earlier in the evening. Uh, the president had indicated that uh, he was gonna get tested and uh, we expected to have results soon because typically it only takes about 15 minutes in the White House to get the results from a COVID test. But we hadn't heard anything for two or three hours. That led to a lot of speculation that something was going on and the president just a short time ago confirmed it, that he and the first lady have COVID-19 and are going to be taking quarantine procedures. Uh, it's not clear exactly, Pam, what that means if they're going to stay in the White House for 14 days. And uh, this certainly raises a lot of questions. If he is going to be under quarantine, does that mean that Vice President Mike Pence steps up to mm. take on some yeah. of the presidential duties? Of course, third in line uh, is House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Um, so there are a lot of things that are going to unfold over the next few days. Um, certainly people are hoping that the president does not have a serious, the president and first lady do not have a serious case of COVID. But as we know, um, he is in the age range where it is is considered uh, a difficult age to be getting uh, an illness like this. Uh, it's in a category where doctors have warned uh, people in that age group that he's in his 70s need to be particularly careful about uh, dealing with COVID. But again, he'll have the top-notch care of um, the full federal government health care system well, to back best, him up. Absolutely the best health care, but you bring up a really interesting point because if Vice President Pence also has COVID-19 because they're together so often, uh, what does that mean for the for the administration of the executive branch of our government? We could have the White House, the entire executive branch of the government, yeah, we, uh, somehow affected by a this. A lot of questions coming yeah. out of this announcement tonight, and most certainly there'll be more coming out through the in the coming hours. Certainly, if anything else develops within this next uh, hour that we are on the air, we will bring it to you. But again, the breaking news tonight: the president and the first lady have both tested positive for the coronavirus. We will return to this as soon as we get more information, but let's continue on with our fire coverage here in the Bay Area, which is, of course, very important. Evacuation orders are changing by the day with the course of the wind out there. Crown Force Ellis Ogamonian live in our newsroom tonight to bring us up to date. Ella. Ken and Pam, wind is pushing flames southeast tonight, so let's take a look at the evacuation orders and warnings right now. Starting in Napa County, mandatory evacuations continue for North Napa Valley in the areas where we see most of that fire activity, like Deer Park, Angwin is a big concern, Etna Springs, and now east and north of Calistoga between Highway 128 and the county line, plus east and west around St. Helena and along both sides of Highway 29, including Old Lolly Toll Road, between Calistoga and Lake County. We also saw Diamond Mountain Road as part of the list. That's all uh, taking a look there in the blue area. We're also seeing the glass fire move into the burn scars that were left behind by the Hennessy fire recently. Switching gears to Sonoma County, a big focus there is to prevent the glass fire from reaching further south. Uh, Glen Ellen is now on the radar, including Kenwood, because of the wind blowing in that direction, as mentioned. Mandatory evacuations are in place for this zone, the red here for for Whitehall Lane to Bella Oaks recently added to the list west to the county line, including the 500 block of Wall Road and Oakmont is still evacuated, of course, because we have seen some of the worst damage out there. A warning is in place for the valley floor south of the end of Bella Oaks Lane and north of Oakville Grit grade and Dry Creek Road west of Highway 29 between Whitehall Lane and Oakville grade. We're going to continue to keep you guys updated on our website, Quanford.com. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Ella. As she mentioned, the city of Calistoga has been under evacuation orders since Monday. Crown Force Gail Ong talked with the mayor, Chris Channing, and Gail joins us live now with how the city is holding up under all of this pressure. Gail. Pam and Ken. Everyone seems to be heeding those evacuation orders as the fire continues to burn uh, right on the ridges of Calistoga and of course surrounding the entire city. It is dangerously close, so that is a major concern. I'm here on Highway 29 near Deer Park Road in St. Helena. It is raining ash. The smoke is thick. Uh, earlier today, firefighters working in hot, dry, rugged terrain. 
Beyond those trees is the glass fire. Firefighters are keeping a close eye on Diamond Mountain Road off Highway 128 and Calistoga, where the fire burned actively throughout the day, threatening homes and vineyards. The area filled with heavy timber and narrow roads. Water tenders are also on standby in case the fire jumps. All of Calistoga's roughly 5,000 residents were ordered to evacuate Monday. We spoke to the city's mayor, Chris Canning. Only the second time in our history as a town since 1863 that this has happened and uh, the last time was only three years ago so uh, while we're a little bit used to it it's not something you want to get good at or become used to uh, but uh, a big big thank you to all the communities around us who are taking our residents in and sheltering them and uh, making sure that they're cared for sincerely appreciate that the fire is threatening the city of Calistoga plus the communities of Angwin and Pope Valley in Napa County engines are stationed by homes Firefighters performed fire operations earlier this week, but the smoke grounded aircraft on Thursday. One of the biggest impediments we have is the visibility because of the smoke, which is not only a, a, the health hazard, but also uh, impedes our operations to actually be uh, effective with our air. In a press briefing, Cal Fire Deputy Chief Information Officer Jonathan Cox says 80 gallons of retardant was dropped in Napa and Sonoma counties Wednesday. 2,500 personnel are working the glass fire. Utility crews could be seen stationed throughout the burn scars along Deer Park Road. The fire destroyed more than 200 homes, still threatening almost 29,000. Back here alive in St. Helena. Um, crews have just been driving up and down Highway 29. Um, a lot of utility crews, law enforcement. Um, earlier in the day, much of the activity was mopping up, getting rid of those trees on the roads. Uh, here, down here on the Napa Valley floor, it's quite cool, a slight breeze, but of course, the concern is in the higher elevations with high winds expected through the night. And it will just definitely be an anxious wait. Ken and Pam, live in St. Helena, Gail Ong, Crom for News. Gail, thank you very much. As dangerous fire weather conditions continue, communities surrounding uh, or in the glass fire area are bracing for the possibility their area could be hit next. Already today, another small fire broke out this morning to the west of Highway 29 in Napa County near Yountville. And firefighters quickly put it out, fortunately, but it certainly put towns like Yountville on high alert. And that's where we find Cron Force Taylor Pasaki live now. Taylor, how are things looking out there at this hour? Well, it's a ghost town, Ken, here in downtown Yonville. Normally, we'd see a lot of people shopping around throughout the day, but none of that. It was very quiet, and I also want to mention that the smoke probably also had something to do with that, but it's also important to know that Yonville isn't under a mandatory evacuation or an evacuation warning. However, many residents here are getting prepared just in case. Concerns grow with the glass fire in Napa and Sonoma counties. Concerns are, of course, the weather. Uh, the um, wind that is indicated probably will get speedier, especially at altitude, which I am at, uh, being in the top of the mountains here. As a red flag warning is expected to last through Saturday. As we enter day five of this firefight, it's a, it's a time of nervousness as we begin a Another red flag warning, which started at 1 p.m. today and is expected to last until 6 a.m. on Saturday. The heat advisory for our, our area also has now been extended until Friday night, creating some challenging conditions for those on the front line of this fire. Worries are for fire growth and new fires beginning. A scare that Napa County had Thursday morning when a small fire named the Campbell Fire started off Oakville Grade Road just to the west of Yauntville. The fire was only several miles southeast of the glass fire's southern edge. Thankfully, firefighters quickly put it out. The cause is still under investigation, but it's possible wind blew embers from the glass fire to the area. People who live nearby in Yonville say it's just another reason to be prepared to leave in a moment's notice. It concerns me, it concerns every resident. Um, we've heard from our town manager, Steve Rogers. Uh, he's provided information to residents on, on the uh, town websites to prepare to, for if in case we have to evacuate. And my family is is doing that right now. We're, we're preparing for uh, if we have to uh, if we have to leave. 
Well, the weather, of course, is something that all of these neighbors will be watching very closely over the next couple of days. It's also important for everyone, if you haven't already, to get a go bag ready just in case. Live in Yachtville, Taylor Bisaki, Cron 4 News. Taylor, thank you very much. More than 2,000 firefighters are assigned to battle the glass fire. Yeah, more, many of them are sleeping in less than favorable conditions after working 24-hour shifts, sometimes even longer. Well, one tent company stepped in to make sure that our heroes get the best rest they can. Cole Jennings and his family with the Jennings Tent Company set up these large tents in the Sonoma County Fairgrounds today. The tents give the firefighters a place to eat and to sleep and to shower. And there are lights and imagine how much they appreciate the air conditioning. It's really cool to be able to be a part of it and help, uh, you know, know that we're part of a big, the bigger picture. Like we're a small part, but it does help. They need a place to go sleep. It takes about two hours to set up just one of those big tents, but how lovely that they're doing that for the first responders. Also in Sonoma County, a restaurant near the fire zone feeding hundreds of hungry, hardworking first responders. It's delivering up to 100 pizzas every day to firefighters. Crown Force Dan Thorne live in Glen Ellen in Sonoma County tonight with what is now a community-wide effort, isn't it, Dan? That's right, Ken and Pam, the owner and the chef of the Glen Ellen Star says that he wanted to give back in one of the best ways that he could. He is so overwhelmed by the community, the community support that they've gotten so far, and he just wanted to give back to the brave first responders on the front lines. By delivering stacks of pizza to glass fire first responders, chef and owner of the Glen Ellen Star and his team are showing their gratitude. There's a sense of pride, there's immediate gratification when you literally hand firefighters who are fighting fire not 100 yards away just pizza or you know a candy bar or just a smile and a thank you. Ari Weisswasser aims to give out at least 100 fresh wood-fired pies a day at the front lines in Sonoma County and it's being done with lots of help from the community. Within 24 hours it was an unbelievable um, you know support and um, we're just continuing the effort every day until we until we get back into business. This part of Glen Ellen is under an evacuation order as the glass fire continues to rage on dangerously close. The Arnold Drive restaurant falling within that order has been unable to serve customers. In a year that's already been difficult because of the COVID-19 crisis, the Glen Ellen with pizza. It's step up anyway. By fighting the fire with pizza, it's helping fill the stomachs and hopefully the hearts of the brave men and women fighting the flames. It's become a labor of love. Yeah, always has been. <laughs> Well, a GoFundMe page that has been set up by the restaurant has so far raised more than $36,000. These deliveries are expected to continue for the next few days in the afternoon, and they will be getting dropped off in the areas in and around Kenwood and Santa Rosa. Reporting live in Glen Ellen, Dan Thorne, Cron 4 News. This is the worst. This is the worst. And anxiety building up among evacuees as winds begin to pick up ahead. Our continuing coverage on the glass fire. Plus, Governor Newsom was in Napa County today surveying the fire damage, the state's new financial commitment to try to help communities deal with extreme fire conditions. Also a disappointing report on Oakland's fire department and its role in ensuring public safety. How the city auditor says the department has failed to keep the promise that it made four years ago. Also, more on tonight's breaking news. President Trump and the First Lady have both tested positive for the coronavirus. More details ahead. App-based drivers strongly support Prop 22 because it protects the flexibility they need. I'm a busy single mom. Recently retired. Taking a full course load. App-based driving works for my family. Being an independent contractor works for me. By 4 to 1, app-based drivers want to stay independent contractors. That's, That's why, why we, we need, need Prop 22. 22. Prop 22 protects our ability to drive on our own schedule. And offers wage guarantees. And health care benefits. Join me and hundreds of thousands of drivers in voting yes. 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 Yes on Prop 22. I never planned on being in an accident, but that truck didn't stop. The truck accident left me with so many questions. I gotta call the Barnes firm. That was the best call I could have made. This election, all Californians will be able to vote safely from home. 
Every active registered voter will receive a vote by mail ballot with a unique barcode. You can track it using Where's My Ballot, and you'll receive automatic notifications by text, email, or voice call to let you know the status of your ballot once you mail it, drop it off at your polling place, or at a drop box. Vote by mail ballots. Simple, safe, secure, counted. Learn more at vote.ca.gov. Baystone Depot, where you will find the Bay Area's largest selection of home design products all under one roof, allowing you to complete your project while saving you time and money. Conveniently located in the heart of Silicon Valley, just off highways 880 and 101 in San Jose. With over 100,000 different types of tile and countertop materials, including natural stone, quartz, porcelain, ceramic, glass, decorative kitchen and bath fixtures, and elegant lighting, we've got you covered. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are available by appointment only. If you are in need of an emergency essential repair, please don't hesitate to call us at 408-441-1114 to book an appointment today. From our Baystone family to yours, stay safe and healthy. A mother murdered in her home. It was a very angry attack. A suspect with an alibi. He came off as calm and collected. But his alibi had a secret. They asked me to wear a wire. Dateline, tonight at midnight. New information tonight on a shooting near Union Square in San Francisco. We've just learned that the victim, who is a 21-year-old male, has died, so this is now a homicide investigation. It happened just after five this evening on Geary Street, not far from Union Square. Police say it started as some kind of altercation, though it's unclear exactly what happened. Police say if you have any information, give them a call. Nearly four years after the deadly ghost ship warehouse fire, Oakland's fire department is still slow to ensure building safety. Yeah, that's according to a report released this week by the Oakland City Auditor. The fire department had promised reforms after the 2016 ghost ship warehouse fire killed 36 people. In the days following that fire, city officials found that the warehouse in the Fruitvale District had never been inspected and was not even on the city's internal list of properties to inspect. Four years later, the audit found the fire department is still failing to inspect hundreds of schools and apartment buildings as is required by state law. That audit report said that more than half of all buildings that are supposed to be inspected each year went unchecked for three straight years. We want to continue now with our breaking news coverage of the president and first lady uh, having tested positive for COVID-19, this uh, just became known uh, about 25 minutes ago. The president made that announcement on Twitter. On the line with us now is East Bay Congressman Eric Swalwell to try and dig deeper into what this means. So, Congressman Swalwell, can you hear us? Good. Yes, I can. All yes, right. I'm, I'm back in Washington, and we just voted uh, earlier this evening on a COVID relief package. Okay. Could you start off by telling us exactly what this means with the president being diagnosed and having to quarantine and get treatment? We don't know the extent of his case of the coronavirus, but we do know that at 74 years of age, he is in a high-risk category. What happens now in terms of our government function? Well, I, I hope he's okay. I mean... For the sake of our country, you know, he is in the age group where uh, you're at the highest risk. And, uh, you know, we are just 32 days away from uh, a very pivotal election. Uh, so I hope he's okay. Um, you know, we also owe it to the American people to have, you know, a very vigorous uh, debate between both candidates going into uh, November 3. And so I'm sure this will shake up, you know, opportunities for both campaigns uh, to debate. Uh, but I also hope, you know, every American now gets serious that if the president of the United States who has access to testing every single day, uh, but someone who has not worn a mask uh, can uh, get this, that all of us can get this. And the sooner we all take this seriously, wear a mask and have access to testing, the sooner uh, we can come out of this. 
Uh, Congressman, we've heard from the president's physician who says that the president is doing well, but did not really elaborate and said that the president will continue his duties. But if he is positive with COVID, does that limit his ability to travel? Do you think he's going to be staying at the White House or Camp David and doing his 14 day quarantine? What do you expect to happen with yeah, his daily activities? He has to for 14 days. You know, that's what any of us uh, would have to do. Uh, so that puts us to the middle. Uh, of October, uh, but you know, also you know, the, the way I see this is that um, anyone around him uh, is also uh, subjected uh, to quarantine, and so you know, he travels with a large delegation and has put others uh, at risk uh, as well. And again, I, I hope he's okay. Uh, but I just spoke to a friend today uh, who was 37 years old, and uh, he had it for about a month and contact uh, contracted pneumonia after having it and told me it wasn't until day three or four after uh, having, you know, a fever and chills when he started to have respiratory issues. So it, it could take some time for this to kick in, but I, I hope he's okay. Uh, but for the sake of anyone else who could be around him, you know, self-quarantining for 14 days is the best way to go. So, Congressman, is it expected then that the vice president, Mike Pence, would take in to help carry some of the president's duties since he will have to not only quarantine but certainly be treated for this illness and again it's it's really uh he of course will have to be tested uh and uh, tested not just today but for the next few days because everything we know about this virus is it could take a couple days uh you know from transmission to a positive test uh and you know i'll, I'll let them sort it out right right now you know as an american i'm rooting for uh, our leaders to be healthy and able to govern I mean, because, you know, we, we want to make sure that's the case. We have a, you know, a, a continuity, uh, you know, plan, uh, a succession plan, uh, even temporarily uh, in place. And so, yes, that's a possibility. But I think all of us are hoping that, you know, our sitting president is healthy uh, and able to govern because uh, once you start going down that line of succession is, is when, you know, uh, things get uncertain. Congresswoman, I'm, I'm curious how you found out this news because you just said uh, you had been voting. Uh, were you at the Capitol? How, how did you get the news? And have you had a chance to talk to any of your colleagues on either side of the aisle? Well, yeah, I, I was home earlier in the week at a testing site in Hayward, uh, but I'm in Washington now, but I live on uh, you know Pacific time. Uh, so uh, although it's late here, I was just watching the news and I saw it, and of course, just like you, uh, my phone's blowing up with people, you know, wondering what's next, you know, in the campaign, what's next for the president. Uh, and, and again, you know, we'll be back at the Capitol tomorrow, uh, you know, trying to get a deal with the president on COVID relief. And hopefully maybe this motivates him to understand the gravity of, you know, the circumstances so that every American who has this uh, can get the relief they need. So what is your major message tonight um, to the citizens of this country in light of, of hearing this news? Seven million Americans have contracted this. 205,000 have died. And now the leader of the free world uh, has a positive test. And again, we you know wish him well, but this should demonstrate that any of us uh, could get this. And so the best thing we can do is wear a mask and have others around us wear a mask. Because when you wear a mask, you're not protecting yourself, you're protecting others. And if others around the president were not wearing masks, that very likely may be the reason uh, that he contracted this. And so, you know, in our workplaces, you know, as we gather with family and friends or as we go to church uh, and, and go about our lives, uh, the best vaccine right now is a mask. The next debate is scheduled for October 15th in Miami. That is just about right at the edge of the 14-day quarantine that the president uh, should be undertaking. Do you expect that date is gonna happen or do you think they'll push it back yeah, or do you think it's all over? That's a decision, you know, really for the president and his health and of course, Vice President Biden, uh, you know, and, and doctors. And, you know, it, for any of us, you know, you really wanna see two negative tests after you get a positive test. And so, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to health professionals to make that decision. But, um, you know, the campaign, uh, will continue. And again, there's a pivotal election coming forward. But uh, this has to be a message to every American, you know, wear a mask, protect yourself. That's the fastest way to come out of this. 
Congressman, as you know, this has been such a contentious issue about, first of all, whether COVID was even real. Uh, it had been called something that would just go away. Uh, then there was the whole debate of people are even fighting on occasions about being told to wear masks when they go into public spaces. We've seen video of young people, people at demonstrations all over the country, not wearing masks, not social distancing. How do you think this news is going to impact that behavior? Well, I hope the president becomes more of an advocate, you know, for precautions that can protect all of us. Uh, you know, now that he has a positive test, uh, it, and it looks like he's going to quarantine, and again, that's the responsible thing uh, to do. And I, I, you know, as a parent of a three-year-old and a near two-year-old, I understand the frustration that parents have right now that our kids cannot be in school. And if we had widespread testing, we would be able to understand the true spread of this and isolate people who are positive but allow people who are negative to go back to in-person learning and teaching. And so I, I really hope this you know, steps up our game as far as you know, understanding the testing, the tracing, and the treating that we have to do to get back to normal. Well, you mentioned that the, our first concern should be about the health of our president, uh, and, and I hope that all of us share that concern, but this is a political season. We have a momentous election just 32 days away. And there's politics. There's a lot of politics involved in this whole issue of what the president's health is all about and what Americans across the country are facing with COVID-19. So uh, having set the plate that way, I'm just curious about your interpretation of the potential spin, uh, particularly by Republicans, Fox News, who have supported the president uh, when he says that this is all just a hoax. Uh, how do you think that spin is gonna work now? Yeah, you know, earlier this evening, the president also spoke to a Catholic organization saying that uh, this was uh, about over uh, the pandemic. And it's clearly not over. As I said, it has now reached the highest office in the land, a place that was expected to have the, you know, strictest precautions for anyone who would be around the president. People uh, literally have to be tested to be in his presence. Uh, and now he has a positive test. And, and I think that should just demonstrate to all of us that, you know, this virus does not know Republicans or Democrats, you know, as its victims. It, it just continues, uh, you know, to spread if it is not inoculated against. And right now, the best way to inoculate against it is to wear a mask until we have a vaccine. I believe we're also getting a tweet now from the first lady, Melania Trump, and we're putting that on the screen. It reads, as too many Americans have done this year, POTUS and I are quarantining at home after testing positive for COVID-19. We are feeling good, and I have postponed all upcoming engagements. Please be sure you are staying safe and that we are all getting through this together. Uh, do you know, have you heard now that you're back in Washington of any other lawmakers who may have been around the first couple have been around Hope Hicks uh, in recent days or are most folks just getting back into Washington? Well, I serve on the Judiciary Committee and the ranking member, the top Republican is Jim Jordan and he was traveling with the president uh, yesterday. I, I have made a conscious decision over the last couple weeks uh, to not participate uh, in person for Judiciary Committee hearings uh, because of the number of Republicans yeah. who have tested positive don't wear masks. So I've been participating virtually uh, to just not expose myself, my family, my constituents. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, there may need to be a, you know, a updated testing uh, and, uh, you know, precautions taken by my colleagues. What happens tomorrow, Congressman? What, what's on your agenda tomorrow? And how do you think what uh, this news uh, that we're learning tonight is going to affect activity in Washington starting tomorrow? Well, again, we, we passed this evening an updated HEROES Act bill for more testing, uh, state and local relief, unemployment insurance until the end of the year, paycheck protection plan. We don't have a deal yet with the White House. I hope this provokes a deal. Congressman Eric Swalwell, thank you for joining us tonight to talk of about course, tonight's breaking news um, that the president and the first lady have tested positive for the coronavirus at a time when 7 million cases uh, have been reported in the United States with more than 200,000 people who have died. Uh, certainly everyone is wishing the president and his family well. There is much more to come out of this uh, information that we're learning tonight and we'll be exploring it throughout this newscast and in the coming days. We'll be right back. 
The Great Debate Blowback. Will you Who shut is up, man? Listen, gentlemen. The worst presidential face-off in American history. How will it impact the election? Next, in Sun Edition. Tonight at 11, followed by E.T. at 11.30. Proposition 16 takes on discrimination. Some women make as little as 42% of what a man makes. Voting yes on Prop 16 helps us fix that. It's supported by leaders like Kamala Harris and opposed by those who have always opposed equality. We either fall from grace or we rise. Together, Proposition 16 provides equal opportunities, leveling the playing field for all of us. Vote yes on Prop 16. Yes on 16 is responsible for the content of this communication. With the Honda Civic, fun and sporty can also be practical and efficient. Just look at how the Civic LX stacks up against the competition. It has more horsepower and more passenger space than the Toyota Corolla L and Nissan Sentra S. With standard Honda Sensing, a suite of safety and driver assistive features. No wonder the Civic is the best selling compact car over the last decade. Contact your Honda dealer to learn more or shop online. Why are so many people switching their Medicare coverage to Kaiser Permanente Senior Advantage? Is it because there's zero annual deductible? And zero co-pays for preventive care. Or because you get quality care and affordable coverage. That also includes prescription drug coverage. Maybe it's because you can visit your doctor, get tests, and refill prescriptions. Often in one convenient location. Or because you get your choice of all available Kaiser Permanente doctors. And all available doctors and even specialists welcome Kaiser Permanente Medicare Health Plan members. Or is it because Kaiser Permanente's Medicare Health Plan is rated five out of five stars in California, nine years in a row? That's Medicare's highest possible rating. Call 1-877-257-7607 and get your free Kaiser Permanente Guide to Medicare. That's 1-877-257-7607. Brianna, on that viral scooter accident. I just wanted to have a fun time, even if they're dangerous. Next ET. Tonight at 1130, right after Inside Edition. We'll get back to the latest on President Trump's COVID condition, but we also want to continue to follow the glass fire that's burning in Napa and Sonoma counties. This is a live image from a web camera on top of Mount St. Helena, and you can see the, the image is frozen right now. It skips around a little bit because it's coming through uh, on the web, but you're looking south from about 4,300 feet from this camera uh, from the top of Mount St. Helena toward the community of Calistoga, which is not in this shot, but if you look down the hills, eventually out there in the darkness would be Calistoga. And you can see this fire is still burning. Pam. Very active tonight. Um, this glass fire has scorched already 59,000 acres in five days. It's only 5% contained. It has destroyed 223 homes and more than 28,000 other structures are still threatened tonight. While the exact cause could take months to determine, one possible cause is reportedly electric fencing around a remote vineyard which is near the point of origin of the blaze. And as the winds uh, pick up, the uncertainty of what could happen is pretty unsettling to thousands of evacuees. Crown Force Dan Kerman was in St. Helena today where anxiety is running high. The air is thick with smoke and ash is increasingly everywhere in St. Helena. This as the skies turned a menacing gray. It's just, this is not okay. I mean, you cannot even see the hills, forget about the hills, you cannot even see like after 500 feet, it's just awful. It's no surprise the downtown area was mostly deserted as most businesses were closed. Those who were out have been through this before. This is the worst, this is the worst. Uh, the first few years we didn't really have to evacuate, but this year we've had to evacuate twice. So it's just been really, really scary. This couple has a home in Angwin they hope is still standing. They're staying with family now in St. Helena after being evacuated. If our house burns down, we're not rebuilding it. We're going to move on. So Yeah, yeah. Somewhere is calling us. Idaho, Montana, Nevada. Nevada. Yeah, Nevada. <laughs> Nevada doesn't burn much. <laughs> so sad. This couple was evacuated from Calistoga. They too hope their home survives because they're now remembering the things they left behind. We are forget some pictures, 
We forget something for the kids. While winds were calm much of the afternoon, the forecast calls for them to pick up, raising the threat level once again in many areas, including St. Helena, Calistoga, and Angwin. Cafe de la Valle, it's all customers were talking about. Some people are more worried than others. Some people are just waiting for like that mandatory evacuation. Um, I think they're just trying to stick as much around as much as they can to save it, whatever they can. But you can definitely see anxiousness in everybody. It's a lot, and still, some choose to remain hopeful. It's looking kind of grim, but we have high hopes. <laughs> How do you have high hopes? <laughs> well, so that's all we can do. It's all we can do. And for many, it's that kind of optimism that will carry them through the next 48 hours. Others will just be on pins and needles. In St. Helena, Dan Kerman, Cron 4 News. All right, let's check in now and see how the weather situation is shaping up with our chief meteorologist, Lawrence Carnot. Yeah, guys, the winds have been picking up in the North Bay, and that northerly wind sending all that smoke back into the bay, so looking horrible out there tonight as that smoke has kind of settled in. Kind of interesting, uh, San Francisco, look here. I couldn't see it a little bit early on, so that smoke is blowing about the Bay Area right now. These are very light particles that continue to move around. So right now you're looking at very unhealthy air through parts of San Francisco all the way down into San Mateo and San Jose and Livermore as you're all shaded in red there. Tomorrow doesn't look to be a whole lot better. In fact, probably fairly similar, maybe worse by the afternoon as a lot of that smoke is going to continue to move to the south with that northerly wind. So very unhealthy air in the forecast, but I think this red may even move further south into San Francisco again, all the way down maybe to San Mateo or so before we start to see a sea breeze moving in. Now, what we need is a big change in the weather pattern, and I think we're finally going to see it. This is that same ridge of high pressure that has been sitting overhead since this last weekend and brought us some record temperatures. So that same ridge bringing us that offshore wind now and continuing into tomorrow. Then that ridge going to start to break down over the weekend finally. And I think on Sunday, we're going to see a significant sea breeze. That'll bring with it some much cooler air, some ocean air moving in. And then a few more clouds begin to work their way into our skies. It looks like we really cool things down the middle of the week. And then watch this. An actual cold front approaches the coastline and there you go, bringing with it a chance of rain to far Northern California even wants to try and drag it here. I think that might be just a little bit early yet, but still interesting. That's what we want to see. We'd love to get that rain going back in the Bay Area. Temperature is going to be hot again tomorrow. We've got heat advisories up, cooling down as we head in towards Sunday. Those temperatures staying down, partly cloudy as we head toward the end of next week. Thank you, Lawrence. Another major concern during the extreme heat is the possibility of power shutoffs. Uh, the state's independent system operator, Cal ISO, actually issued a flex alert for today. It happened to expire at the top of the hour at 10 o'clock. Nonetheless, there was the potential for power shutoffs. The governor touring fire damage in Napa County today pointed out that the state did distribute millions of dollars to local governments to respond to possible outages. $13 million for cities and counties, $20 million to special districts, and $2.5 million to tribal governments. We prioritize those dollars in a way to help support more broadly the health and safety of communities impacted by bad air quality associated uh, with these fires as well uh, as impacting the ability to provide quality health care in a system that's impacted by power outages and evacuations and the like. With nearly 4 million acres charred across the state of California and 20,000 firefighters on the front lines, the governor noted that this fire season gives his administration a bigger nudge to spend more money on fire prevention projects. We'll be right back. App-based drivers strongly support Prop 22 because it protects the flexibility they need. I'm a busy single mom. Recently retired. Taking a full course load. App-based driving works for my family. Being an independent contractor works for me. By 4 to 1, app-based drivers want to stay independent contractors. That's, That's why, why we, we need, need Prop 22. Prop 22. Prop 22 protects our ability to drive on our own schedule. And offers wage guarantees. And health care benefits. Join me and hundreds of thousands of drivers in voting yes. 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 Yes, yes on Prop 22. Ad paid for by No One Eye, sponsored by the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Committee major funding from California Association of Realtors Issues Mobilization PAC, Equity Residential, and Hudson Pacific Properties, Inc. Financial disclosures are available at sfethics.org. For small business owners, it's been the hardest year of our lives. The pandemic devastated our livelihoods, and now we're just trying to survive. Proposition I could wipe us out. 
Prop I taxes small neighborhood businesses when we're already reeling. As so many of us desperately try to renegotiate our leases and save our employees' jobs, Prop I makes it even harder. And what's worse? Prop I pours millions of taxpayer dollars into a city hall slush fund with no protections for how politicians use the money. Small storefronts are the heart and soul of San Francisco. Please don't tax us out of business. No on Prop I. It's idiotic. Baystone Depot, where you will find the Bay Area's largest selection of home design products all under one roof, allowing you to complete your project while saving you time and money. Conveniently located in the heart of Silicon Valley, just off highways 880 and 101 in San Jose. With over 100,000 different types of tile and countertop materials, including natural stone, quartz, porcelain, ceramic, glass, decorative kitchen and bath fixtures, and elegant lighting, we've got you covered. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we are available by appointment only. If you are in need of an emergency essential repair, please don't hesitate to call us at 408-441-1114 to book an appointment today. From our Baystone family to yours, stay safe and healthy. Our breaking news tonight, word that President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump both have tested positive for the coronavirus. The President and the First Lady tweeting out this information tonight, uh, letting the nation know that they were going to work to get through this together. Uh, their aide, the President's aide, Hope Hicks, was first diagnosed with coronavirus and then it came to uh, know that she was traveling with the President and now he and the First Lady both have the illness as well. We spent some time earlier this uh, newscast talking to Congressman Eric Swalwell, who is in Washington, D.C. tonight, and he expressed his uh, wishes that the president does well and is healthy. Uh, we now are joined by our political analyst, Michael Yaki. Uh, Michael, thanks for joining us. Your reaction, first of all, to hearing this news. <clears throat> well, I think, I think with everyone in the nation, we're all sending our hopes and prayers for the president's uh, and the first lady's recovery and health and good health through this through this uh, crisis but i think that you know this just goes to show the fact that no matter what kind of protocols you have in place um no one is safe and that masks and social distancing are probably the best preventive measure that's available and uh, they did not follow that michael what happens next in terms of government operations um how is it determined whether the vice president has to step in? Does the president make that decision? What is the next order of business, how things uh, happen with our government? Well, I think the first order of business is that they have to engage in serious contact tracing to understand when Hicks may have been shedding the virus. Who is she in contact with? There is some indication that she may have been with Pence uh, as 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 late as Tuesday of this week. Um, who else was with the president during the time when he may have been, been contagious? And you know, Mark Meadows, Steve Mnuchin, you know, they were meeting with um, Speaker Pelosi for, for 90 minutes on, on Monday. There's a whole, th and, and the reason I say that is because those are, the, those are the next people in the chain of chain of command in terms of the United States. So all of this depends on the president's health. Uh, nothing, nothing can happen until there's a determination either by the president himself uh, or by the or by the cabinet under the 25th amendment that he is unable to uh, deal with the range of power and has to transfer them over uh, next to the vice president. But again, part of this exercise is going to be doing the contact tracing and testing and quarantine, quite frankly, of all these of, of probably all these individuals uh, to the extent that they find a chain of possible um, infection in order to sort of stabilize this because this is a, this is a national security matter for this country as well. The ability to have the the, the transfer of power in case the president is incapacitated. And remember, Boris Johnson had to do that in 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 England yes. earlier this year. I think in, in April. So this is this is this is very serious. I think you'll see a reaction in the markets of. Uh, uh, tomorrow morning, but all this will depend on how, quite frankly, how well or, or not the president does 
in dealing with uh, with this. And now, you know, for whatever you may think of the president or not, he's someone who has seemingly always been in good health. Hopefully that will stand him in, in very good stead going forward. But they, they have to do the test. They have to do the contact tracing and the testing and ensure that the next two people in line, Pence and Speaker Pelosi, uh, are protected as well in case, God forbid, uh, the, the president uh, doesn't do as well um, while, the, while the virus goes through, goes through his system. Uh, this question was, uh, Michael, addressed uh, by the New York Times, which uh, writes that under the Presidential Succession Act, if both Mr. Trump and Mr. Pence were unable to serve, Speaker Pelosi would step in. In the spring, the White House said it had no plan for such an eventuality. That's not even something that we're addressing, said Kaylee McEnany, the White House press secretary. We know that uh, there has been some attempt to keep Vice President Pence separated from President Trump because there have been other people in the White House orbit who have tested positive but not key players and not, you know, super close to the president, but a valet, some Secret Service members and the like, right? Yeah, that's true. But, but under the 25th Amendment, even if they don't have a quote-unquote plan, the fact is, is that the cabinet can meet at the direction of the vice president and and uh, and under 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 one of the articles, and unfortunately I don't have it in front of me right now, um, they can essentially by majority vote vote to um, transfer the power the power of the presidency to to the vice president. And under the Succession Act enacted by Congress, if the vice president becomes incapacitated, then the, then by law tra the power transfers over to the Speaker of the House. So there 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 are. Play, there are laws in place that will govern that governs the succession, but that's you know, way premature right now. I think the first thing is is deal with the president's health, do the contact tracing, uh, make sure that everyone in in the line of succession is is uh, uh, you know, treated and, and I mean, tested and, and treated if need if need be, and they're and they're quarantined and go from there. But I think it all depends right now. On, on how well the president does in the next few days. And I think that's what all of us will be um, hoping and praying that everything goes well, because you don't want to see uh, th this virus hit anyone um, at all. It, 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 is, it is indiscriminate in who, in, in, in what it, in how, in who it uh, takes. So, and 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 no facts. So, Michael, yeah. we have about a minute left in this newscast. Um, just real quickly, do you think the president's uh, now contracting this disease will shift the political debate in terms of uh, the priorities of wearing masks and social distancing that has been become so contentious in the nation? Well, I think I think it should because again, just because you have everyone around you getting tested doesn't mean that you can't get it. And the best way to prevent it, as, as Anthony Fauci and, and the CDC has said, is wear a mask and practice social distancing. That's the best preventative that you can do. All right, Michael Yaki, thank you for your time. Thanks for joining us on short notice on this uh, major breaking news. President Trump, First Lady uh, Melania Trump have both tested positive for COVID-19. They uh, made that announcement uh, just about a little more than an hour ago or just less than an hour ago. And uh, they are both uh, going to be in quarantine for 14 days. Our news continues on Cron On. And this story will, of course, carry over through the night and into tomorrow. Thank you for being with us tonight. Stay safe, everybody. Good night. Good night. Great debate blowback. Would you Who shut up, man? Listen, gentlemen. The worst presidential face-off in American history. How will it impact the election? Next, in Sun Edition. Tonight at 11, followed by E.T. at 11.30. It was a very angry attack. A murder suspect with an alibi. But the alibi had a secret. They asked me to wear a wire. Dateline, tonight at midnight. But I do feel like I'm a pawn in their chess game. I'm a kidney patient, and I have been for almost 29 years. I take it as an insult that these powers that be want to continue to just persist in passing this bill that is only beneficial for them. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. I could die if Prop 23 passes, because if my clinic closes, I don't know where I'll go for treatment.
protect me and 80,000 other dialysis patients. Please vote no. Our home was burned to the ground in the Tebbs fire. The flames, the ash, it was terrifying. Thousands of family homes are destroyed in wildfires. Families are forced to move and higher property taxes are a huge problem. Prop 19 limits taxes on wildfire victims so families can move without a tax penalty. 19 will help rebuild lives. Vote yes on 19. Only Xfinity Mobile lets you choose shared data, unlimited, or a mix of each. And switch anytime so you only pay for the data you need. Switch and save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill with the carrier rated number one in customer satisfaction. Call, click, or visit your local Xfinity store today. Wildfires rage in the North Bay. Take a look. Still very active fire. Forcing families to flee their homes. It was really scary. I could lose everything. Cron 4 is your go-to source. Very unhealthy to unhealthy air. For fire coverage around the clock, turn to Cron 4 News and the Cron on app. John and Chrissy's heartbreak after their pregnancy loss. Rihanna on the accident that left her bruised. And why Brad wants Angelina's former co-star to testify in